The power that is developed by an electrical component is the amount of energy that that component transfers per second. So power is measured in watts and you can also think of that as joules per second. So if we had a power supply such as a battery and if that was connected via some wires to a lamp and we have a complete circuit then say we have a current that flows in this circuit and if we say the current was 2 amps and if the battery supply is 12 volts then the potential difference across the lamp measured by a voltmeter would be 12 volts in this case and we could calculate the power developed by this lamp and that remember is the the energy transferred per second from electrical energy into heat and light in the lamp we can calculate that power by using the equation power equals V the potential difference across the component times by I the current through the component and so in this case the power would be 12 times by 2 and we would get 24 watts so every second 24 joules of energy are being transferred from chemical energy in the battery to electrical energy and then to heat and light in the bulb this is also true for transformers and we can use this formula P equals V times I to link the input and output of a transformer so the electrical power in and the power out of a transformer is given by the equation now let's look at the input side of a transformer so on the input side we have an alternating current source so we have a kind of wavy line there and so we can call that VP which stands for the primary potential difference we also have a current on the primary side going backwards and forwards and that is IP it's the primary current now this creates a current in the coil which makes a magnetic field in the core which continually collapses and grows because of its alternating nature and that cuts through the secondary coil which then induces a potential difference in the secondary coil because that magnetic field is cutting through the, the uh, wires of the secondary coil and we induce a secondary current so we can call that I subscript S and an associated secondary potential difference which we'll call V S or the voltage on the secondary side so the power in to the input side using the same idea as P equals V I would be V P multiplied by IP that's the input power we can say power in the amount of energy that's being put in to this side every second now if we assume and here's the assumption that was made if we assume assuming that the transformer is 100% efficient if we assume that this transformer is 100% efficient which means that all of the power input on one side all of the energy input per second on one side appears at the secondary side and nothing is wasted as heat then we can say that the power in must equal the power out of the transformer so voltage on the secondary side times by the current on the secondary side now 
This is not quite true in practice because transformers are very nearly 100% efficient if they're designed carefully. But the current in the coils heats up the coil a little bit and that wastes energy through heating and the magnetic field which is constantly changing in the iron core creates little eddy currents and those eddy currents create heat so it heats up the core a little bit so we lose some energy in the process of going from the primary side to the secondary side so transformers are not 100% efficient in reality but this equation is useful because it, it gives us a calculation for the ideal case the ideal case so we we know in practice it probably won't be it won't be that far off the ideal case so let's just label these up IP is the primary current VP is the primary potential difference or voltage potential difference I subscript S is the secondary current secondary coil current and V subscript S and VS is the secondary potential difference and that's the equation which links the power in with the power out for the ideal case assuming that the transformer is 100% efficient.